Great. So this is a special day for me as well. It's a beautiful day. It's special because I get to talk about the the new V8 supercharged engine, the GT500, but it's also great for me personally because I get to see my colleagues introduce the Gen 3 um, Super Duty diesel engine, and I had the pleasure of owning that engine from concept through to initial production. So it's a really great day for me to see that engine get another upgrade while we're also upgrading our 5.2 liter. So to jump into the discussion here, uh, you've heard the, I think the horsepower number, 760 horsepower. We make that at uh, 7,300 RPM. Uh, the torque is 625 foot-pounds at 5,000 RPM. What's really interesting over and above that is we make 85% of peak torque from 3,000 RPM all the way to redline, all the way to 7,500 RPM. So that's 537 foot-pounds of torque in a 4,500 RPM band. Well, what's that mean to the customer? That means a really drivable vehicle, something that's a lot of fun on the racetrack, at the drag strip, and just driving around every day. Very, very capable car. We like to call it the and solution, where you get something that you can enjoy every day, you can take it to the road course and enjoy it just as much. Okay, um, kind of jumping into the engine a little bit, we'll talk about the engine, we'll talk about the dual clutch transmission, we're going to talk about cooling, and we'll get into a couple components here. Okay, first the engine, this is a hand-built engine from Romeo Engine Plant. Okay, it's, it's built alongside the GT350 engine, which you guys know and love. Um, it's team, a team of two guys own the engine from the cylinder block all the way through to the finished assembly. You see their signatures on the top, on the badge, just like we've done in the past. It's something that's very special that our UAW partners deliver for us every day. Um, getting into the architecture of the engine, a cylinder block, and you'll find as I talk through this, um, yeah, although it's based on the GT350 engine, we've touched just about every component in the engine to make it capable of the 760 horsepower. The block, uh, we've improved the structure. Uh, specifically, we put in longer head bolts, move the first engaged threads down uh, to make it stronger um, and to give it better clamp load. They handled 125 bar firing pressures that you see with the high output. Uh, with, the, with that change, we also added a, an extra active layer in the head gasket, so it's got four active layers in the head gasket. Again, that hand, handle the high firing pressures. Um, we've spent thousands of hours dyno testing um, and also all the track testing, and we're, we're very pleased with the durability of the, of the entire engine, the sealing system, everything. The, the heads are an evolution of what we've done from the GT350. They're CNC ported. Uh, we went through and we upgraded the, the springs to higher tension, higher, higher loads, and we've upgraded the, the seats and the valve materials to handle the higher thermal loads. Um, moving, moving through the drivetrain, uh, the crank is a cross-plane crank. Uh, for that is strength to handle the high firing pressures. Uh, all new connecting rod, bigger cross section, micro alloy steel in both the con rod and the crank to handle the really high firing pressures. All new forged piston, nine and a half to one compression ratio, um, and higher flow in the uh, piston cooling jets to take care of the piston to let it handle the thermal loads. Um, down at the bottom, we got a structural oil pan that ties to the dual clutch transmission. Um, we were looking for an elegant solution that can handle the high G loads that this car delivers. Um, it's pretty tough to have a lubrication system that's functional with 1.5 G's maximum cornering. So we spent a lot of time and effort trying to figure out what that solution was. So excuse me, I'm gonna step around here. So you'll see this oil pan here has active baffles so they're they swing their trap doors they swing inside the oil pan and that keeps oil around the pickup tube during those high g maneuvers and so it's it's a it's a very elegant way to maintain the package and the weight of the existing product and still improve the performance 
of the lubrication system and support the performance of the car. So uh, moving up top to the supercharger, uh, the airflow in the supercharger flows, I'm gonna stand back here, excuse me. Um, the airflow comes actually underneath, so it's a reverse flow. And so it allows us to tuck the supercharger down in the valley so that we can get it under the, the elegant hood, the low hood line that we have. Um, and so the airflow comes in underneath uh, through the seat and supercharger, it's 2650 cc or 2.65 liters. And the airflow comes up through the intercooler and then out through to the cylinder heads. Um, it has a one-way clutch here to handle the, the uh, torsional loads that you see with a big supercharger like this so that it uh, stays quiet and smooth and durable. The intercooler is worth talking about as, as we move kind of over into cooling in a bit. This intercooler is sized so that we don't get any heat soak. So you get consistent performance for an entire session on the track. And when I say an entire session, you can run this car out of gas and you'll still be getting full performance. Uh, so we've, it's, it's an air to water intercooler. It has its own cooling loop, it's a low temp cooling loop. And then in order to, uh, to get maximum length of time on the track, we also made some changes to the fuel system that allows us to run the fuel tank completely dry. And you can imagine with one, one and a half G cornering load, that's kind of tricky. So we've got a jet pump in addition to a couple of fuel pumps that manage the fuel flow and, and uh, allow us to use every drop of fuel. Okay, um, moving along, we'll get over to the cooling system here. Um, the front end of this car is 50% larger than the GT350 to give us the airflow that's needed uh, to cool this car. When you make 760 horsepower with a supercharged engine, you actually have to make more than that gross power. For, so for a cooling system standpoint, it has to cool a, an engine that's producing well over 850 gross. So it's a substantial uplift from the 526 horsepower of the GT350. Okay, so we've got six coolers on this, six heat ex exchangers. Uh, we've actually got an auxiliary uh, water uh, a radiator for the engine on the left side, and then we've got the oil cooler on the right side, and we've got a stack of coolers throughout. Um, feel free to walk around and check it out. There's a massive amount of heat this thing is capable of projecting. Um, and now for uh, the really special part of this car, the dual clutch transmission. This is our end solution. So we knew when we created this car capable of this kind of output that we needed a power drive driveline that could complement it, could give us something that was fast and smooth, was very capable on the track and at the drag strip and with everyday driving. So we partnered with, these, with uh, Tremec to do this dual clutch transmission or DCT. It's a wet dual clutch setup. It's got seven forward gears. It's the first dual clutch transmission in this class of car uh, and we're very pleased with its performance and its drivability. Everyday driving, you'll find that it's smooth, it's docile, uh, it's easy to drive. Uh, when we take it to the track, it's crisp, it's very fast shifting. And with the paddle shifts, you have the choice of driving it as a, in manual mode or in five different modes of, uh, five different modes. So we have, we can drive in normal mode, we can drive in sport, We'll talk about these more in a minute. We have a drag mode, we have a track mode, and we have a slippery mode. Uh, normal, everyday driving, going to the grocery store, going to church, whatever, relaxing day with your family. Sport mode for that spirited driving, crisp, really, really fast shifts. And when I say really fast, it's faster than a blink of an eye. It's 80 milliseconds. So imagine three times three to four times faster than a blink of an eye 80 milliseconds it'll shift so 
Um, we have the slippery mode, which when you get caught out in this beautiful car on not so, such a nice day, you get the surprise in the Michigan weather, as we all know. Um, you've got a mode that makes it easier to drive when it's wet. Um, and then the, we have the track and drag modes. So drag, drag isn't actually, interestingly enough, the fastest shift doesn't always make the fastest car. So sometimes you want to slow down a little bit so that you apply the maximum amount of torque to the rear wheel. And so in drag mode, we slow the shift down just a little bit to make sure that we're putting the maximum amount of torque to the rear wheel at all times. So it's, it's a really clever transmission and control system. Um, in track mode, a little different than drag mode, in the straight line, it'll do something similar to that. But then it, we have sensors that tell us when we're in a corner. Well, you don't want that over torque bump in the middle of a corner. You want a nice settled chassis. So in, in, in track mode, we have this set up so that drivers that are very capable, that are driving at the limit of the car, can actually shift in the middle of the corner and not unsettle the chassis. Any good driver will tell you you can normally pick a gear and leave it in a gear in the middle of the corner. This car, this transmission is so smooth that they can shift in the middle of the corner, get to the maximum performance gear that they want, and not worry about unsettling the car. It is absolutely fantastic. To achieve that, we had to couple our calibration team with the Tremec calibration team. So we had two engineers living on site with us every day, working closely with us. We had an um, uh, engineering team in Europe coming over here, us going over there. Very, very close, tight relationship. You can imagine trying to turn 625 foot-pounds of torque, or if you will, 537 foot-pounds of torque at the, at the um, red line. Turn that off to make an 80 second, 80 millisecond shift, and turn it back on. Is very, very difficult, and so we had to work very closely together as one team in order to execute uh, that and be able to do that. Um, okay, um, I think we can wrap up now. I think uh, we just want to talk and give you. A, we haven't really talked about acceleration very much. We haven't given you any hard acceleration numbers. So I want to remind you that uh, this um, this is embargoed until August 5th, 6 a.m. All this information I've given you. And um, we went out and did some testing here recently, and we discovered that this car is capable of doing zero to 100 and back to zero in 10.6 seconds. So when you think about it, the original Shelby Cobra, we all know and love, it did 13.6 seconds. It's three seconds faster. This is, this is in supercar territory. There are very few cars in the world that can, that can run in this range. Uh, and to put it in layman's terms, uh, I was thinking about, I've got a son in the Navy, and uh, he's, in, he's in the Gulf right now, and so we were kind of bantering some ideas around on how to talk about this. And uh, if you put this car on an aircraft carrier at one end, you could touch 100 mile an hour and be stopped before the end of the runway on an aircraft carrier. So that's pretty impressive. What's more impressive is the closest competition, um, they wouldn't quite make it. They'd be in the dirt. So, 